Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Talking Tuesday. Hopefully, I think it's going live. So we'll just give it a minute and see. We're redirecting it to Facebook Live right now. So hopefully, everybody's seeing us. I'm looking, Jean, on Facebook Live, waiting for the notification. So we'll see if we're, if, if we're live here in just a minute. And there we are. We are live. All right. So well, hi. welcome. Welcome to Talking Tuesdays, and I we have an amazing opportunity to meet with, and your first name, say your first name. My first name is Shang Hong. Shang Hong, okay. Shang Hong, Dr. Shang Hong Lu, who is the founder of the Mount Shasta Integrative Medicine, and she's also the medical director for Reading Integrative Medicine. So thank you very much for taking time to be with us. I love to. I'm, I'm just so inspired by both of you. Thank you, Dr. Liu. Well, thank you. Thank We're you. Very excited you're here. And, and uh, for those of you who don't know, Chico and Redding are, we're real close to each other, about 100 miles. Uh, Dr. Liu is about 100 miles north of Chico. So right close to the North State. So very exciting. We're so excited that you've joined us tonight, Dr. Liu. Well, well I just feel you two have been you know, really opening the path to clarify many of the concerns. So people are so confused about diet and how to lose weight and, and all that stuff. So you, you are amazing people. I'm going to Thank send you, you guys a lot of my very confused clients. <laughs> <laughs> we will be happy to, to help the, guide them with your help to a plant-based destination. Well, yes. One of the big things, and I know your expertise and area, and I'm so excited about this because I am the queen of toxins. I, I love learning about them and reading about it. I've taught environmental science, so I'm really excited about your background and what you've been showing us. So as people begin to transition from the SAD diet to a plant-based diet, they lose weight. No, no ifs, ands, or buts. I mean, you start to lose weight, but you also start to release toxins. So what are some of the things that they're going to experience? What symptoms are they going to see? Well, one of the things many patients um, start to experience is they feel they have so much energy, which is great. They also sleep better. Mm -hmm. They poop better. Um, they just start to see things that's changing on their skin. I think those are wonderful feelings. Um, meanwhile, if they're not prepared, they are going to feel hungry. Um, and I think it's not because of the food they're eating, it's because they don't know how to eat a lot. This, mm. this program is really different from other program, is you need to eat a lot of vegetable. And so people don't, you know, like my daughter, she was really excited to do it, but she didn't go shopping. So of course she has nothing in the refrigerator for her to eat. So I, I just want, to, want people to know, overall, everybody feel fantastic and they're pooping better. That means their toxins are coming out. Their stomach is getting smaller. So that's what you have to realize. We have accumulated over 40, 50 years of toxins in there. Mm -hmm. We need to feel that release of toxins. Now, some people do have an emotional detox and they can become a little bit angry. Um, some people uh, almost feel a little bit sad. So those are things you just have to acknowledge. It's part of the toxin leaving your brain and your brain need to rebalance that neurotransmitter. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what would be some of the symptoms they're going to experience as they start to lose some of these toxins? Yeah. So what, like I said, um, most of them are good stuff. They're actually feeling better, but some people may feel they are, um, they're, they're, they may feel a little bit sl sluggish. They may feel uh, achy, achy joints. Um, their, their guts start getting like gassy and diarrhea. And those are all symptoms. Their body may have too much toxins that we may have to support them. Um, okay. I, th I think my favorite one is actually, are you still there? Yeah. Okay. My favorite. My favorite one is actually teaching people how to eat liver happy food. Um, you know, the bitters, the vegetables that has a lots of cabbage, those are actually really good to help your body 
to add more phytonutrients to detoxify the body. If right. you just Google liver happy vegetable, you're going to get a list. And then Jean and Nancy will teach you how to cook it. Right. <laughs> we do. <laughs> <laughs> because we do see some really junk vegan food too, right? So oh my you don't gosh. want to eat those. <laughs> no, we go with whole food, plant-based, and yep. stay away from the processed foods. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's uh, definitely... And toxins are everywhere, Dr. Liu. Um, can you tell us... Um, can you tell us about obesity? Obesogens. This is a this is a term that's relatively new, and it's pretty. It's obesogens is a word that is. Gene, um, uh, there we go. Uh, somebody's taken over my computer. Can you see that? <laughs> uh, that's Dr. Liu. Ah, I'm Dr. Liu. Slide of the uh, toxin question. Okay, really quick. Ah, there wow. we go. Okay. My bad. This is new technology. We're using Zoom and it's fantastic. Yep. We can actually share slides with all of you. Uh, real quick, Dr. Liu is going to tell us what obesogens are. Okay. So before we jump into obesogen, I just want you guys to know what are toxins because people don't really know what are toxins. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I kind of divided into three different kinds. The most common one are chemicals. So chemicals are toxins um, usually you know, start to accumulate in our life after World War II. It turns out World War II created a lot of chemists. We have a, a, a lot of petroleum product that's uh, after the war, we don't know what to do with them. So a lot of the chemists discovered, you know, the petrochemicals are great fertilizers. Uh, they are also great pesticides, herbicides, fungicides. They are also making a lot of the um, sealers, uh, electrical conductors, and those like PCB and BPA, those chemicals. And they are very, very much similarized. Uh, they're similar to your hormones. Now, why that is so bad? Well, because they interfere with your thyroid function, with your estrogen metabolism, testosterone are being blocked. So we all know in medicine, those hormones are keeping people lean and, and young, right? When those hormones are interrupted, is they, the metabolism start to change. Now, the statistics showed, you know, the, the, the really this, the data shows we have so far registered 50 million man-made chemicals in the United States alone, and that was in 2009. So we don't have any data recent, so I, you can imagine that that number has really increased. And the sad thing is 80,000 chemicals, this is according to Breast Cancer Fund, um, 80,000 chemicals have been used directly to humans. They're either food additives or agriculture additives or something we put on our body, okay, directly to human. That's, a, that's Only, incredible. 80,000 80, chemicals? 80,000, yes. That's, that's, that's too many. That's Clearly. too many. <laughs> too many. Are you guys there? Yep, I'm here. Did we lose Dr. Liu? Dr. Liu? Dr. Liu, are you with us? Um, Dr. Dr. Liu, did you lose your Facebook connection by chance? I think she did because I think she's frozen. Yeah, she is. Oh my so, gosh. I mean, 80,000, would she say 80,000? No, there's, yeah, she said 80,000 chemicals. That's, that's just to me is overwhelming. Absolutely. I mean, especially when they start to get into the environment and especially when you get these two chemicals that start to, to, to mix with each other, it's, it's just incredible. I mean, well, I'm, yeah, it's, I'm, it's I'm sure she's going to come back in because we right. lost her. So she's right. going to come back in, I'm sure. But it's really incredible when you start to get some of these chemicals. Like, for example, when you get a PEG and a sodium lauryl sulfate, they're going to react together. And in the environment, they're going to create a chemical called 1,4-dioxane, which is right. so toxic to the environment that the EPA measures it in parts per billion, not million, billion. Billions. That's just... That's that, how sensitive they... That's it, incredible. Yeah. So when you get these two chemicals that are mixing together that may, you know, may not be, and it's actually mixed in some of the, 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 the personal care products. 
so that you're doing. So, you know, they actually put those two chemicals together in those in a, in a bottle of like say shampoo or something like that. And they don't have to list that it's going to create one, four dioxane because they didn't put it in there to mix, but the chemicals are there and they react together, but they don't have to list that. It's amazing. It's just, it's absolutely amazing how the United States government has, you know, since the war allowed over, you know, up to 80,000 uh, chemicals invade our, our food supply. Our right. doctor, um, let's see, I am looking at the Talking Tuesdays with the Starch Queens right now. So we apologize everybody for the technical problems that we're having right now. So please, please, please bear with us. We're and hoping that Dr. Lou will be back with us momentarily. Yes, we do. So. We definitely hope so. So what we're going to do here is, let's see, I'm going to go back here and ask for questions. Hi, everyone. Sorry for the delay. We're having technical problem. So in the meantime, Jean, how's your week been? I think I just bought a house or I'm in the process. We're in contract with exactly. a place on Cape Cod for a plant-based destination vacation. That's what I was hoping that while we're waiting for Dr. Lou, let's share a little bit about our both of our visions for plant-based destinations. I, I can't wait. I mean, I, I, we purchased a house that will be able to rent out rooms that people that want to come if you need to learn how to cook, great. I can teach you how to cook this way. If you need a place to just come and relax. Oh my God, this is so amazing. I just, I can't wait. Um, I just can't wait to see how, wait a minute. And um, something interesting just happened and it says that the video is not there. It still says it's on Zoom live on Facebook. So, yeah, everybody, you have to understand, we're just still working out the kinks with this Zoom. Um, Zoom. Can you resend Dr. Lou the link? And then she can pop back in, I think probably is what you're going to have to do, Jean. In the meantime, I'll talk to everybody who's out here in Facebook land, and I'll let you know what's going on in the Starch Queens program. So this month is all about no caffeine. We are having a no caffeine challenge. Our, um, our group members, some of them have been no caffeine for a long time. Uh, myself, I've been no caffeine for a while. Um, it's measured in months, not years. I'm very highly sensitive to caffeine. So I finally decided my sleep was more important to me than um, that one cup of green tea in the morning that tended to keep me awake all night. So we are challenging our Starch Queens members to go caffeine free. Last month, it was beans and greens, having two servings of greens and a serving of beans. And the month before that was no refined grains. We're having phenomenal results. Everybody's learning about their bodies. And I'm even going to give you a testimonial while we're waiting for Dr. Lou. Every, um, every day, Monday through Friday, Jean provides us with a, a topic of an educational topic about plant-based living lifestyle um, and our trifecta. The, the Starch Queens program is based on the trifecta approach. We believe in what goes in and on your body in the barn fitness in the as well as um excuse me what goes in and on your body fitness and gene i've gone blank i was just more concerned about the the, tri the trifecta trifecta what goes <laughs> in the food and drink on. environmental toxins what goes on your body so the environmental okay. toxins and water and, well and then exercise I mean, and exercise i was trying to put the two together the whole technical thing's got us a little bit flex flummoxed. So anyway, so we have our um, program. Each, uh, each day we have our educational topic and today happens to be fitness. So we asked our group members to share a story on their journey today and how the programs help them and their um, journey with fitness. And I really wanna recognize one of our members. Um, her name is Laura Wing, and she's also one of our plant-based town group leaders. She's running our 10-day challenges. But Laura has um, a, a wonderful testimonial that she shared with the group today, and I'd like to read it to you. In the beginning of May, if someone had told me I'd be getting up early every day to ride 
ever increasing distances on my bike, which I didn't even own yet, I would have laughed them out of town. I hadn't ridden a bike in over 20 years. And to be honest, I was a little afraid to try. The first time I went out, I had to walk up every hill. Now, Laura lives in the deep south. So there's flat lands and rolling hills. And if you can imagine, she's riding her bike, she's stopping and she's pushing it up the hill and then down, then getting on at the top of the hill and riding down. And so, you know, going uphill on a bike is, takes a lot of leg muscles. So, but at least she was walking up the hill, which also takes calf muscles and quads and hamstrings. And so even though she wasn't riding up the hill, she was still getting a great workout pushing the bike up the hill. So anyway, she says that, um, she was a little, she was a little bit afraid to try. The first time I went out, she walked up every single hill, which was 1.3 miles. And on that, she was on her husband's 30 year old bike. She ended up buying a bike, bought the next weekend. Just over a month later, she was up to eight miles daily, plus walking and feeling less fatigued and more energetic than I did after the first lap. I can make it up all the hills now, even without good, without a good fast start. A year ago, I started just walking around my neighborhood. I was so out of shape that I had strangers pulling over and offering me rides home. Some of them offered to find my daughter for me, assuming I was out looking for her. It was hot, sweaty, and miserable, but the more I did it, the more I loved it. The neighbors have stopped offering me, the neighbors have stopped offering me rides home now. I guess they decided I wasn't going to drop dead on the road. Ha! I'm not sure about my fitness goals. For now, I'm adding a lap a week, but I know eventually I'll have to taper that down and maybe focus on intensity. Not sure. I've never been athletic. I'm uncoordinated and clumsy. I was out of shape and obese. I've always been more of a bookworm than a sports fan. If I can do it, anyone can do it. And, and that's, that's amazing. I mean, that to me, that's fantastic. So today in the morning ride along, I talked about having an I can or an I can't attitude. Either way, you're right. You know, right. you're always right. You either can or you can't. And one of the um, books I'm reading right now is on physical fitness. And did you know that we use about 40% of our muscle uh, when we're getting fatigued? It's our brain telling us to, that we're tired because because it wants, we're going into, survi into survival mode. So when you think that you're at the end of your ride or your run, you're still only maxing out about 40% of your, your muscles. You can go that extra distance. So part of the Starch Queens program is fitness. And our members are starting to walk more and move more. And we've got our apps, our, you know, our Fitbits. My little bracelet says, keep moving. My daughter, Maddie got this for me. So we're real excited. We're really excited about seeing all the changes that um, our members are, are experiencing. I wonder what happened to Dr. Lou. I told her to reboot her computer to try that. So uh, okay. we get in contact with each other. So um, I just uh, think maybe that she had a bad connection. I, I don't know why, but I sent her another link and hopefully she'll be in in a minute, but I have been doing it. I've noticed, um, when you find someone who is actually at the same level of exercise as you are, it's amazing. And because if you have someone who is really super advanced, it's no fun because they're always going to win. You know, like the, the, they have challenges that you can do on Fitbit. And so they're always going to win. So you just feel like, man, why even bother? Because I'm not going to beat this person. Or on the flip side, if you connect with somebody who you're way ahead of, you know, it's no fun for them either. And it's no challenge for you. So you need to find somebody who really is right at your level. And I found Kara. Kara is killing me. <laughs> she is. There's a secret out. I think Kara is really bionic, Kara. I, I think so. <laughs> I think so. I think she puts it on the dog and puts yeah. the dog on the treadmill. That's yeah. just what I, my thoughts are. Yeah. No, Kara. Kara wanna, is absolutely yeah. amazing. And I'll go to bed and I'll be a couple thousand steps ahead of her. And I'll wake up and be 5,000 steps in the hole. And it's like, right. Well, what, are you, what are you doing? What, so, what are you doing at night? Seriously. Right. So, well, yeah, Ther Ther Teresa Adams is asking, if you retain fluid in your lower extremities, what do you suggest? Well, Teresa, my first question is, I want to know why you're retaining fluid in your lower extremities. What's what's causing that? Do we have a kidney issue? Is it a circulation issue? I want to know, you know, the body is should not be retaining fluid. And there's our doctor. 
Hey. Yay. Yay. So we know what we'll do. We'll do, uh, Teresa, is when Dr. Lou goes back to her presentation on um, toxins, we'll ask her about that because that would be a good question for the doctor. Okay. Yes, I, I'm so sorry. I somehow uh, missed, get disconnected. Uh-oh. Well, we're glad you're back. <laughs> okay. It's Facebook, it's, Facebook te it's Facebook technology. We're all at the whim of this. So, you know, you have to just take it with uh, patience. Yes. So we were talking about the three type of uh, toxins, right? Right. And we did a chemical. You guys got the chemical? Yes. Yes. 80,000 chemicals, you said. Okay. And then did we talk about the biotoxin? Not yet. Not yet. Aha. Uh -huh. That's all how I got uh, disconnected. Okay. So let me find the biotoxin page. Uh, we did talk about heavy metal, right? We just, we were touching on it, just the chemicals. We right talked there. a little bit about the, the cadmium, the chromium, the lead, the mercury. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I have a, a quick question for people. Um, you know, people say, where do I get the mercury? And um, of course, some people said it's a dental filling, but the most common source is actually from coal burning, and when the mercury rises into the air and then it falls into the water and gets consumed by fish and we eat the fish. So in the whole process, there's a bio transformation of mercury. Well, it's biomagnification. Uh, right. So the mercury itself does not really cause problem, right? But until it gets eaten by the fish, uh, the mercury become methylated, methylmercury mesomercury start to attack your body. So I just want people to know the fish is actually a very, very poor choice. Um, it's not considered healthy food anymore. And I know a lot of people didn't know that. Um, FDA no longer recommend fish oil as supplement for, um, for our pregnant women, okay? So because not FDA, uh, EPA. EPA no longer recommend fish. Okay, so, um, so heavy metal is the second group. We definitely can talk about that. And then the biotoxins are toxins in your house and sometimes from an infection in your body. And that can produce very toxic endotoxins. And those are um, appearing more and more in modern life because the building material we use are tight sealed. They're very, very efficient. So, which is a good thing for energy preservation, but at the same time, mold love the sealed environment. So they tend to grow more easily. Um, certain areas such as Houston, Florida, you know, people next to the ocean, if you have a modern building that's really tightly sealed, it actually have more chance to have biotoxins. Um, the symptoms of biotoxin oftentimes involve mental uh, issues, anxiety, palpitation, brain fog, and sometimes a pure psychotic, okay? So I just want people to know, if you walk into a building and you just don't feel well with your brain, and you have to suspect uh, mycotoxins, the biotoxins, okay? So now we, we talk about the three different kinds of toxin, and I really like to touch the issue on obesity. Um, obesity, um, have I, anybody heard about obesity? Because I've never heard about it. I've heard the um, term. So, yeah. <laughs> but it's a relatively so, new one, though. It's a relatively mm -hmm. new. And um, this book is actually mentioned by a cardiologist. And he, uh, the book's name is called the Clean. Clean. Okay. He talked about the concept of obesity. The definition of obesity is number one, it changes your metabolism. It slows down your metabolism. Number two, it also hammer and it's very harmful to your liver. It not only stimulate the fat cell to grow, it also make the fat cell bigger. So for people, let's say they start with 400 pounds, they, you have to realize these people have more toxins in their body and they have more fat cells 
they have more volume of the fat cells. So initially, when we lose weight, we're just losing the volume of the fat cells. We're not even losing the number. So um, I have been in medical weight loss, you know, for 20 years. And the reason I totally fell in love with plant-based since 2013 is that I actually have about five pounds myself. And, you know, people, uh, when they're thinner, they're actually having trouble losing that weight. So I learned is the fat number, the cells don't go away very easily, okay? So I really do not recommend people, you know, that go into some type of diet, such as extreme ketogenic diet, paleo diet, oh. uh, Atkins Very. diet, <laughs> starvation no. diet, HCG diet. The problem with those diets is they, they will shrink the fat cell volume first, but they release all these toxins to your body, right? Without adequate fiber, phytonutrients provided by plants, cleaning up your liver and gallbladder by plants, is these toxins actually create more fat cells. Wow. Think about oh. it. They are creating, you know, from 1,000 to 3,000, they're just smaller. Okay, so these people are very happy, you know, at the beginning, Dr. Lu, I lost weight and, you know, but quickly they start to rebound. Yeah. And the rebound is very tricky. Is they said, Dr. Lu, I ate an apple, okay, and I gained five pounds. Now, how could that be, right? It's impossible because the number have really increased during this process. So for people, they have tried the paleo, you know, the ketogenic diet is you watch them, they're going to get fat. They actually not only get fat, they're getting thick. They, they look very like unbeatable. This, this chunk of fat is so dense. It's different from at the beginning when they, you know, they're big, but they're kind of loose, you know, but when they get so densely packed by fat cells, they are really devastated. And I, I, I want you to know, you know, when I was doing the detox program for people, people, they haven't tried this kind of drastic diet. They do much better, much better. They will just detoxify, lose weight, feel great. But people have tried ketogenic or paleo diet for three, four times, probably five years. Those people's fat is super dense and they cannot detoxify very well. So I really want people to know you know, if you really want to have a long lasting weight loss, change your diet first. Don't even bother going to the CrossFit, you know, extreme exercise, starvation, because you're just going to gain the all back. So that's just my advice. And I, I feel you too can really help these people making a smooth transition. We do our best. Yes. <laughs> well, how do these obesogens affect the fat cells? So they make it bigger and they make them divide. So, so okay. you know, the estrogen, they, they actually make um, more people like women. You know, you, you sometimes see those men, they have man boobs. Have you seen mm -hmm. those man boob people? Yep. And if you touch their skin, they're actually kind of soft. So they actually behave like estrogen. Okay. They also found recently obesity is related to 12 cancers. And why is that? Wow. Toxins. Well, the estrogen, that, the, that their body thinks a lot of these chemicals are estrogens. Oh, do we lose Dr. Lou again? Oh, uh, she's, you know, Dr. Lou is up in Mount Shasta. And so it's possible. Um, she did send me a text that she's having some bad internet connections. But I do want to note them. I was reading up on the... Um, the obesogens today and um, BPA is one of the um, known um, obesogens. Uh, also a uh, gene of uh, PFO, is it PFOAs that are right. in uh, uh, the nonstick cookware. So if you're using a Teflon based uh, cookware, you're gonna definitely wanna swap it out for a PFOA uh, product because um, it is also a, a known uh, 
toxin that is an endocrine disruptor that can lead to this type of, um, of uh, obesogen. And, and I just, when Dr. Lou was talking about that different type of more dense fat, you know, I, I really think that that is something that is something to be discussed because there are, there's, there's visceral fat, then there's the, the, uh, the, the first layer of fat. I can't think of what that's called. Um, and then like, like she was saying, the more increased fat cells, that's, those are, those are tough ones to, to work with, you know, harder let's to, back, let's go back to the BPA for a minute. Yeah. Because the BPA is a chemical that makes plastics hard. So you have right. the, the water bottles, right. you know, the hard water bottles, that's, that's the BPA. And even if it says it's BPA free, here's what they did. So they took BPA is a very large molecule. So what they did is they broke off a little piece of that molecule right. and changed the chemical formula. So technically it's not BPA anymore. Right. But here's what happens is inside your body, your body still thinks and re responds to it as BPA. So, you know, even though it says it's BPA free, it's not really. So you want to make sure that you are consuming, you know, your liquids. And so I have, and I just love these. And these are from Chico, California. Um, these are uh, clean canteens. And this is a double walled insulated stainless steel. And I love this because I can, you know, throw it in the dishwasher and it keeps things really hot or really cold all day long. And yeah. I love them. They have different ones that you have lids on them. I have, you know, different ones like that. But it, it, you want to make sure that you're you're consuming things out of something that you know is not going to be a toxin to you. So I'm pretty right. pretty okay with stainless steel. So, yep, uh, I, exactly. And I've got a question from Teresa Adams. She says, "Is it true?" This is a question for Eugene. Is it true that the body surrounds toxins with fat in an effort to protect the body? It, it does, and that's some of the conversation that I had with Dr. Neil Barnard. And he's from the book Power Foods for the Brain. And actually, I just recorded uh, the video number four with him. And it talks, it's almost like an oyster. You know how an oyster, you get this little grain of sand that's inside the oyster. And the oyster creates this layer around it. And it keeps building layer every day, layer after layer after layer. So that the sand pebble or the piece of sand is not irritating the oyster at any point. So the pearl gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's not an irritant to the oyster. Well, that's kind of what's happening with your fat cells is that they get bigger because you've got these like toxic dumps that you, the chemicals just go into these fat cells. And oh my gosh, you've got this dump and you can just see the fat cells. And I've noticed like on my stomach, because I still have some pretty large fat cells on my stomach. But if you can take your skin and kind of just push on them, you can feel the fat cells. Oh, right yeah. underneath your skin. And yeah, I have that, that kind of, um, even though um, I do want to point out for the viewers that are just tuning in that may have not uh, been part of our Starch Queens program before, uh, Jean, our Starch Queen of Diamonds, Dr. Jean Schumacher, she's lost uh, 100 pounds. I've lost 105 pounds. So we, we can tell you about our fat cells. We are pretty much fat experts. <laughs> so if I push my skin together, it's kind of globular, you know? So there's, yeah. uh, so, you know, I don't know if I, I need a tummy tuck, you know? Yeah, I need a tummy tuck. But it just, it feels different than, of course, of say when I was 20 years old. So is yours like that too, Jean? Yeah, mine's kind of spongy and yeah. yeah i mean you can feel how big it is i mean yeah. it's just it is we're and talking about the expanded, expanded fat cells and dr lou is back yay <laughs> all right check have to reboot my computer so okay so what causes these obesogens to accumulate in the body tissues so one of them is think about your body as a bucket when we mm. were born our bucket are smaller um, you know, filled with the toxins. Although today, Jean and Nancy, they have found kids born, before they are born, they already have over 288 chemicals in their, in their umbilical blood. So very, that. very that's, concerning. That's heartbreaking. It's devastating, right, for, for yeah. our next generation. And I see it in the um, classroom every day. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I so, don't teach the way I did 25 years ago. They can't handle it. Exactly. Cannot comprehend and learn because of the toxins. So you think about your body is a, is a bucket that you have two hoses going into the toxin 
and then you have one, you know, one pipe come out. So you have to realize modern life has cre created so much more toxins going into the bucket than our body can handle. When people choose a diet that is really high in fat, no fiber, don't poop three times a day, they don't have phytonutrients, those are all important bodily biological functions to help you release the toxin every day, right? So if you choose the wrong food that's not detoxification friendly, you're just going to accumulate faster, okay? People don't understand it, right? They, they have the craving, they, they can over, overcome the, you know, all this uh, dairy and egg craving. They don't understand, they're really not helping their body. Now, if you live in the pristine environment, you know, they, they don't have lots of toxins to start with, you know, like 20, 30, 50 years ago, we don't have so much obesity is because we didn't have the bucket fill up so quickly. Today, if you choose the wrong diet, your body will show you you're toxic. So for that lady who had the swelling, the lymphatic toxins that's now coming out of her body. So make sure she poops three times a day. She adds some probably important phytonutrients to help her get rid of the toxins. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Then she will overcome that. She will feel great. One of our viewers, Dr. Liu, asked how you can live in a, you know, this is, there's no toxic free place, probably maybe in the Amazon somewhere, but um, not how, even, you, you know, how can a person reduce their toxin intake? Yes. Okay. So I always tell people it's really simple. Three things. Try to do organic. Okay. People say, uh, I can't afford organic. Then Google. 30 dozen, 30 dozen is like things that they spray many times, okay? So organic on 30 dozen. Number two, plant-based, okay? Mm -hmm. So plant-based have much less toxins. Let's, people always ask me this question. How about grass-fed beef? Okay, they always say organic grass-fed beef. Let me tell you a story. I have a, a, a oligo scan, which is a scan for toxic heavy metal and minerals, okay? I want to see this incredible young woman and that she's very healthy, she's very health oriented. She said, you know, Dr. Lu, my minerals are depleted. So I'm going to do the bone broth. And the bone broths I choose are organic grass fed bone from animals, okay? She said, just allow me to do that for three months. And I'd like to test it again. Okay. So I did. I, I you know, I, I waited for three months and she came back. When she tested, her mineral did get better because the bone does have more minerals, but very imbalanced. She has way too much calcium, way too much boron that push her magnesium to the red. Okay. So, so animal bone is a very imbalanced mineral, but... What's really concerning is all her 14 heavy metal increased. All of them, right? What that says is bioaccumulating of toxins from eating animal, you know, particularly bone marrow and milk. Those are very, those are places that have a lot of, uh, have lots of fat. Most of the toxins love fat, right? Mm -hmm. So I always tell people, let's say, you, you have one acre of land, okay? And as human being, they, let's say there's air pollution, you know, air pollution from the heavy metal. If you are, if you're plant-based, you're eating maybe like just a bucket of vegetable, right? Right here with that heavy metal on it, right? But if you are eating the cow, the cow have to eat a whole acre. And then you eat the cow, so we're, it's, it's a simple bioaccumulation. It's very simple. You know, I tell people, it's not how much the cow you eat, it's how much a cow is eating. If the cow is eating 1,000 parts of heavy metal, and you're, if you're just eating vegetable, you're only eating two, like a one part, do you see? It's called a bioaccumulation. It's very known. 
in a very good book, everybody should read it. It's called The Silent Snow. Silent Snow is an environmental group. You know, they measure women's milk mm -hmm. and they found this one group of women. They're all double blind. We don't know where it come from. That their toxic chemical was off the roof. And they wow. said, that has, that has to be a wrong data. So they said, you know, do it again. They, they sent another batch. They're off the roof, right? Off the chart. So this scientist decided to find out who are these women. And it turns out they are the Eskimos that live in oh. the, the fishing village, okay? So what they eat there they eat, is they eat whale blubber. Now, what oh. does whale eat? Whale eats fish. seal. Seal eat fish, right? Fish eat shrimp, you know? It's just a bioaccumulation and if human is on the top of the food chain, we're going to get the most toxins. And that's okay. really important to, you know, to, to have people understand just because it's organic grass fed, fed it doesn't mean they're free of toxins. It's true. That's and so that's true. a big source for people to get their toxin. Yes. Well, you've also got the animal products are causing acidity in your body. Exactly. You know, in terms of alkalinity and acidity, and you have to alkalize that. So that's another yes. huge issue, another stress on the body, in addition to the toxins that you're being exposed to. Yes. And also, Jean, what I learned um, is when animals living in horrible condition, um, their stress hormones are really high. Yeah. Okay. So, so let's say if, if you measure the cortisone level in, in, the pers in, the, in the very happy animal, um, and then let's say grass-fed beef. People always say grass-fed. Do you know what they do to those grass-fed beef is they actually, at the day of slaughtering, like when the slaughtering coming, is they put them in the feedlot to fatten them up, okay? And there's actually a documentary that some people observe their eyes, their behavior drastically change when they're in the feedlot. They all sense the near of the killing and they all, their eyes become different and they're eating like mad because they know that's, that's their last meals, right? Their cortisone level is off the roof. So, you know, when people eat that, they, they are all, you know, automatically are basically overdosed on, on cortisone. And I don't know if you guys have ever tried cortisone. We have patients, one woman said, you know, she was taking cortisone for her asthma. She was so hungry. She can eat the cow. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, <laughs> exactly. Is yeah, I had yeah. to have a steroid shot because this earlier this winter, I had a terrible case of bronchitis, pharyngitis, and laryngitis, and they gave me a steroid shot, and you're instantly hungry. Uh, it's bad stuff. I mean, cortisol, we want to have low, low, low levels of cortisol. And what people don't realize is they say, is in the packaging, they'll say, you know, no antibiotics, no hormones. But what they don't tell you is that the, the animal has naturally occurring hormones. And when their fight or flight hormone cortisol is triggered, then yeah. there's no control. A packager and a grower can't, they have no control over it because they're a living entity. You know, they're, they're just like you or me. So they're going to have that level of, of hormones level in their tissue as well. That's absolutely fascinating. Oh. Dr. Liu, we have a question um, on the ob obesogen. So I want to kind of paint a picture here for one, for one of our, um, one of our starch queen members and a viewer. She happens to be a borderline. Um, she has, she has, she's reversing her um, fatty liver syndrome, but she was borderline metabolic syndrome. So if a person is working in a, in a toxic environment, their home is toxic, like say they have the pest control man that's coming every week or twice a month to spray for the, you know, the daddy long leg spiders. Um, is there a way a person can get out? You know, yes, we say uh, we're doing everything right in the Starch Queens program. We're, we're going whole food, plant-based, maybe or maybe not organic. But is there anything else a person needs to do to kickstart their liver get that liver cleansed to, to maybe ward off some of these obesogens and, and get that liver kick-started? Um, that's a really good question. So in our practice, we do have supportive uh, supplements, and one of them is called calcium deglucurate. 
calcium deglucurate is a naturally occurring, um, like uh, I would say, nutrients in the liver. Um, but the normal dose we produce is about 500 milligrams. So what we discover in the model ID, we need to increase it to about 3,000 milligrams if we are facing some kind of environmental challenge. Um, for many people, they're living in the farm, you know, they can't guarantee everybody. Like my neighbor actually sprayed the Roundup on a windy day, and that's really bad because it actually spray over two miles radiance. So on those days, you have symptoms. People can feel it. Their eyes are dry, their throat is tickling, and their, their brain kind of feel foggy, and then they feel like they're congested. Okay, that's not allergy. That's just something just being sprayed. So we recommend people increase calcium degree grade to 3,000. So if, if they don't have access to that, is there things that they can do like in terms of foods that can help them to detoxify their liver? Like I think you mentioned the liver, the plant foods for the liver. Yes. Yep. What are some of those? What are some good examples of those? So a green detox juice um, it's always great. We have a couple of the, if you Google green detox juice, just make sure they are organic um, because if they're not organic, they actually can be worse, right? So we want them to do a lot of dandelion, um, like bitter. Um, I, what, what I love is arugula. Arugula is great. Cilantro is good. Um, kale. So you make a beautiful green juice and you drink it by the end of the day. Um, another thing is actually grapefruit. Grapefruit have a lots of calcium deglucurate in it. So you can mm -hmm. have maybe make a big jar of grapefruit juice and drink it. I love grapefruit juice. I know, I me too. Grapefruit. I, actually like to, I actually like to eat grapefruit. So that's even better. That's good to know. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Good. Definitely. That's, that's amazing. I know that liver, our liver is our, you know, our biggest organ in our body and it's our biggest filter. And when you have, you know, environmental issues and you're dealing, being, dealing with these obesogens and you have fatty liver syndrome and metabolic syndrome, it makes it, and then if the woman happens to be in the middle of menopause or postmenopausal, it's almost like it's trying to move a freight liner up a hill when it comes to losing weight. It is very difficult. Yes. Yes. And I do think uh, when a woman goes through menopause, not only one hormone is changing, it's a couple of them. Mm -hmm. uh, what I noticed, you know, I'm 54 this year, I'm going to be 55. What I learned is when you go through menopause, your thyroid goes, goes down to a halt. And so that's something people need to realize, even though your lab can look normal, but your thyroid is not working at the cellular level, okay? Interesting. Another thing is um, those people have tried all kinds of diet, and I'm sure you guys heard of those people. They tried, uh, you know, Weight Watcher, Tops, and everything, right? So when they, the first started, <laughs> <laughs> um, when they first start with you, you have to realize their thyroid has been really suppressed for every, every time they try something new. Okay, so to trick the brain, which is the pituitary gland, you have to make sure they eat a lot of food. I always tell people, don't be afraid of plants. They have, you know, you guys have a calorie dense chart. Mm -hmm. You know, just make sure people eat a lot of vegetables. Right. They, they aren't, they're not going to get full and they just need to eat a lot. So when I tell people, if you feel hungry, your brain is going to suppress the thyroid. So make sure you don't feel hungry. I mean, my husband goes through that. I mean, well, he's, his brain, he doesn't need to lose a lot of weight, but his brain, you know, if he sees a large salad, oh my God, that's so much. I can't eat. Oh, no, 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 no. That's too much. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Let's look at the calories of how many calories that are actually in this. There's not many. And when we stop and count the calories, like, oh, okay, I guess I can eat that. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and it starts to, to, he starts to think about it because, you know, I'm, I'm just big, you know, big salads, big, big, you know, servings. He's like, no, no, I don't eat that much. And I'm like, 
you need to. Right. The calories, unless you put things like rice or quinoa or beans, a lot of beans in the salad, the vegetables, there's probably not even 125, 150 calories unless you load it up with a a salad. But we don't use oil in the Starch Queen. Starch Queen's program doesn't doesn't recommend any type of oil. So you're not going to get the calories from the oil. So, you know, that's one of the things we push in our program, Dr. Lou, is micronutrients and lots of them. The more you can eat, the healthier you're going to get and the sooner your body's going to heal. And we're seeing great results. It's, it's wonderful. So I, I really love that you're, you're, a, 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 you're, propon- you're recommending lots and lots of vegetables because that's what we recommend as well. Yes. Also, the oil is a big thing because mm. right now I don't, name, I don't want to name people, but there's some functional medicine doctors are highly recommending fat. Um, you know, for a while, they wanted to eat two sticks of butter a day. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> two sticks uh, of butter. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, oh, so people you. don't understand. Um, that's a lot of calorie. That's a lot of calorie. At the same time, the, the theory that our brain is made of fat, therefore we need to eat a lot of fat, absolutely does not, is not true. Okay. Fat are very easily made from carbohydrates. People don't know that. Um, carbohydrates, healthy carbohydrates can easily make fatty acid. You don't really need to supplement. And uh, there are a couple of essential fatty acids our body does not assimilate, but they're usually in fruit and vegetables and nuts and seeds. So make sure um, the nuts and seeds, I learned as, as something, is try not to eat uh, the cooked one. The cooked ones are usually making the oil deformed. They're not good. The raw nuts are way, way better. So you can, you know, just kind of like crush the raw nuts and then dry them with low heat and then maybe, you know, spread it on your salad for the oil. Yeah. We have a question from one of our viewers, um, Dr. Liu. Uh, let's mm-hmm. see here. Uh, Freddie would like to know what about clarified butter? A uh, clarifying butter. What is that? I have no idea. So that is a clarified butter. Is a it's a way they cook it down and make it very. I believe it's making it clear. Uh, it's still butter. It's still it's pure. It's still pure fat. It's pure dairy fat. It's uh it's still butter. So um so I'm gonna answer that one for you. Butter is better. My husband worked in the dairy industry and butter is better. You know it's like you know it's, a rock is a rock. Butter is better. Yeah. So another thing I want people to know, butter come from milk. So right. milk, you know, is a pregnant cow that just delivered baby. And milk has been found to have 20,000 times more estrogen than, than, you know, than, 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 than human, okay, than a woman. You know, do you know how much hormone we have? We probably have, you know, 300, um, you know, micrograms per, uh, per uh, you know. A pregnant cow has 30,000 estrogen. Wow. They all go that, into the milk. Do you, you, when you that's put that into perspective, yeah, you put that into perspective, it's mind blowing. Yeah. yeah, you are eating, and, 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 and that's where butter comes from. They're from milk, right? Condensed milk, and it, it, it's, it's really uh, estrogen, love fat. You know, you, you, that's why a lot of the estrogen products are in the fat cream because they are in what in the, in the butter. So that's another thing I, I stopped doing butter. Um, people say, I can't do soy. Soy has too much estrogen. And that's really funny because milk has way more estrogen than soy. So anyway, I just want you to know that. And also I came from China and I want people to know living in China for 24 years and then come here living, you know, in the United States for almost 30 years. What I learned is people don't understand why the Chinese used to be so skinny. And I have a really good friend. They will say, I can't eat rice because it's too much carb. But that's what we did in China. Every person is skinny, used to be, because that's what all we ate. We ate, we ate mostly rice three times a day. We have very little meat because meat is once a year thing during the spring festival. We have no dairy at all. And we have some egg, but the egg is also once a month Like each family has just a certain amount. It's very small part of our diet. 
our main diet is rice. And at that time, there's no type 2 diabetes. And right now, China is consuming so much meat, is leading the world in meat consumption. It's also mm -hmm. leading the world in type 2 diabetes. Wow. So heartbreaking. People don't know that. You know, people think it's a oh, blame on their rice. It's not the rice. Just, when you see a culture like in China mm -hmm. that has not had typically like diabetes, and yeah. then all of a sudden they change it. Do you think that they're more susceptible in changing their diet than say like, you know, the sad, you know, cause we've kind of grown up with the sad diet and I don't know, is our, is the people in China more susceptible because they're changing? Absolutely. So Jean, one of the thing is the Chinese people for 5,000 years have not experienced a drastic increase of Western disease. So you guys probably don't know what Western disease is. Western disease oh, yeah. are metabolic syndrome, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, cancer, and autoimmune, okay? So now we're seeing explosive number of Western disease. And wow. it's clearly related to pollution, the chemicals adding to the coal, but at the same time is their choice of food. Right. I, uh, China every year. Um, my husband has been born vegetarian. He has never eaten animals. So every time we go back at the beginning uh, for 15 years, we have a lot of like a big selection of vegetable. And just in the past couple of years, we're seeing less and less options on those menus. And it's wow. absolutely devastating. Absolutely wow. devastating. Crazy. You know, Dr. McDougall, one thing Dr. McDougall has said for his entire career is the Asian population with the being starch based is where the health is. There was no type two diabetes. And if you if anybody out there has not read the China study, it's a book everybody should read. And in my opinion, it should be a required reading to graduate high school and then again to graduate college because you don't know, read it once, read it twice, because this is it's your life depends on it. It's so powerful. And rice is healthy. Don't be afraid to eat rice. Well, that's what Dr. McDougall said. He saw right in front of him the population that changed because you had the Asians that came over to Hawaii where he was doing his practice and the original parents or, you know, family members that came over stayed with their plant-based diet and continued on until their 70s, 80s, 90s, they were working on a pineapple plantation and they were working every day. And then their kids in their 50s and 60s were getting sick. Then their kids in their 30s and 40s were getting sick. And then the fourth generation, teenagers, and they've got one of the largest obesity ep epidemics in Hawaii. Yeah. So, yeah. And he would see this every time. You would see the, yeah. the, the matriarch, patriarch of the family, tall, thin, without issues. And then yeah. down the road, progressive obesity. So yeah, let me ask you a question. Um, what causes these obesity? No, um, sorry. What are the most dangerous obesogens and where do we find them? Aha, that's a good question. I, the most dangerous is actually agricultural chemicals. So people say, what are agricultural chemicals? Well, they are pesticides, herbicides, fungicides. Right. They are also um, the glyphosate, which is the main ingredient in Roundup. So Roundup has been a very, um, you know, it's just a favorite of farmers because they, you know, you spray and all the weeds dies and your crop grows, so it's very convenient. But people don't know Roundup have three major damaging effects. One of them, it kills all the microbiome, all the like bacteria in the soil, in the plants, everything is gone. Okay, so wow. the plants are very unhealthy. Depleted. Feed it. Um, number two, when our gut is not healthy, right? We also create this brain to be, we call leaky brain, leaky gut. The brain become very sensitive to the inflammatory factors that's in our food. Um, so that's number one, it kills the microbiome. The second mechanism of glyphosate, it chelates all the minerals. That's why the plant, we need to eat organic. Uh, right. as much as possible, because organic will be better. Um, number three, it actually mimics glycine. Glycine is amino acid that helps many functions. I can give you a big list of glycine. One of the main functions 
is glycine actually is part of the insulin receptor. So uh, glycine is yeah. that. So some of the people need to realize, you know, their diabetes can be related to their neighbor's spread of glyphosate. Wow. Okay, so that's the one that I really am asking a lot of practitioners to start measuring it. Um, people can measure it for free on their own. And the, the website apparently is called detoxproject.com, I think. And can you people, say that again? You broke up. I think it's called say detox, one more time. Uh, detox Project. Let me see if I can find it, okay? I'm, I'm a little bit away. Project. Detox Project uh, Protocol. Okay, let me see if I can find it. Okay. So you guys can give it to them. Okay, that sounds good. We have a question real quick while you're looking that up, Dr. Liu. Um, back okay. on the rice, the rice topic. Um, Teresa says that when she eats brown rice, it's her, her it, it hurts her stomach. Aha. Uh -huh. So one of the thing, um, number one, make sure it's an organic brown rice. Is she using the organic brown rice? Well, we'll see if she answers us. Um, okay. Let's see. Teresa, do you hear us? Uh, are you eating organic brown rice? We'll wait for her to reply. Okay. I had mentioned in the comment that it could be the increase in fiber as well. Brown rice has a lots of fiber. So I think one solution is to have her eat some vegetable or warm soup uh, before she eats the rice because she may be acidic and rice for some people can be a little bit of acidic. Mm. Isn't that interesting? interesting? That, that is. is interesting. That's very interesting. Okay, I'm still trying to find that link. Okay. Um, <laughs> Okay. But also too, for the brown, instead of the brown rice, she might try some other grains to see if she has issues with the other grains. So that would be another choice. Like my absolute favorite I love is the Kamut, K-A-M-U-T grain. And I love that. And I use that every, in place of rice in, you know, like my beans and rice, I'll eat that with the, my beans. So there's uh -huh. a lot of different grains out there. You don't have to limit yourself to rice. So if you're finding brown rice is causing issues for your stomach, First of all, like you said, cut back a little bit, you know, and, and gradually increase, up, increase. Thank you. <laughs> Having a senior mm -hmm. moment. Um, yeah. But it's, you know, gradually increase, but also try other grains to see if you have reactions to that. Did you right. So Ter Teresa answered and she is not eating organic rice. So the answer is no to the organic rice. Okay. Uh-huh. So Teresa, try to do organic rice because even rice are sprayed glyphosate for harvesting. So all the grains, all legume and wheat are sprayed for harvesting. So just ever remember glyphosate is the one that makes your stomach really upset, not the rice. Right. So I just found uh, the detoxproject.org is, the, um, is definitely the, is the website. Okay. Nice. Excellent. Thank you for that information. We also have another question real quick, Dr. Liu. Um, Robin is asking about basmati brown rice. Is there any difference, uh, Robin? So we have to ask you the question too. Um, bas is basmati, um, basmati rice. What about mm -hmm. basmati brown rice? I, I, what do you think about that rice? That's the one I ate. I love that one. So we do rice too. Kind, the big fat sushi rice those have the highest glycemic index, have the least fiber and the most processed. So the basmati brown rice is the best. They have very low glycemic index, very high fiber. Awesome. My, hus my husband and I love long grain basmati brown rice. We buy it organic and it's easy to cook in the instant pot. It's yeah. flavorful. It's, uh, it's, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not a person who likes the sticky rice. So it, it separates yeah. well, it cooks well in the instant pot. I'm a huge fan of organic brown basmati rice. It's uh, the short grain brown rice is like you say, it's more starchy and it's higher on the glycemic index. It's got its purpose in recipes, but for just go to go with a big bowl of vegetables, basmati's for the win for me. 
Okay. Yes. So you talked about the most dangerous obesogens, like in the animal ag or the agricultural industry. What else? Where else are you going to find these? I would say, Jean probably agree with me, is the chemicals we put on our body. Oh, um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> they actually measured women, uh, the average woman put on their body in one morning. It's about 750 kinds. Oh. Um, the environmental uh, medicine group actually measured a woman and they, they collect her blood. I think they collect her blood and they saw throughout the day, she has a couple spikes of these really toxic plastic chemical, okay? Um, and then they said, what is she doing throughout the day? So they found out what she was doing is applying the lipstick. Oh. The lipstick, the conventional one, are absolutely toxic and our lips are very easy to absorb things. Yes. So suddenly she's getting that spike of toxic chemicals. Um, so I really want women to, you know, I always ask my husband, I said, you know, do you guys like women with big red lips or something? And, and, and he always say, you know, Shan Hong, the girls put on makeup for themselves, for their peers. The men don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's why I just, I was shocked that because most husbands would tell you, right, um, that's what, what was bothering them. It's, it's not, it's, it's actually women they do it for themselves. <laughs> yeah, my husband, if I try to kiss my husband with lipstick, he, he wipes it off. He goes, how can you stand that stuff on your lips? <laughs> I don't know. I've been using it since junior high. It's just a habit. Well, but yeah, that's a good the, the, the chemicals in the products, Gene, you got to go there. EWG, environmentalworkinggroup.org. They've got the cosmetic database and they also, which is not just cosmetics, it's shampoo, deodorant, toothpaste. It's all the things that you put on your body. Literally 26 seconds, it's in your bloodstream. 26 seconds. Yeah. So wow. they have an app called Healthy Living that you can download. It's free. I like free. And you yes. can down that, download that on your phone. And they have, with your camera on your phone, you can take a, a screenshot of the barcodes. And I was in a, a place that I was uh, waiting to get my hair cut, poof. And, and he was late. And so me being me, I pulled out my phone and I started playing with the app. And every product, when I first picked it up, I said, oh, this one's got the price tag and the barcode. Okay, so somebody put it in the wrong place. Okay, fine. So I picked up the next one. Every product had the price tag in the barcode. So you couldn't scan it. Well, me being me, I scrapped, scraped off the bar, you know, the price. And I, my goal while I was waiting for him, I had about 15 minutes to kill. And every product that I rate them on a scale of one to 10, every product that I picked up and they were not cheap. Every one I picked up, it was five or more rated on the EWG scale. And I was like, whoa. And I could, my goal was to try and find something under a five. I didn't find one. Not in that store, but the whole storefront where I go to get my hair cut is with a lot. I mean, there, there must have been thousands of products, and I was yeah. like, "Wow!" And a lot of them are they're neurotoxins that that are in shampoo. Hello, and you're putting it on your brain. I, it, <laughs> it just makes me crazy. It just makes me. Uh, that's one of my big things is is the environmental toxins that we're being exposed to. So, so I want to interject real quick. We have some questions coming in. Um, I know we're running out of time. Freddie wants to know about Burt's Bees. But what we're going to do is we're going to at the um, when we end the, the live broadcast in the comments, we're going to put in the links to the products that we like. Jean um, is and I both really, truly like Pure Haven Essentials because there's absolutely no chemicals in them. Right. Uh, Zooey. Zooey Cosmetics from Australia are organic and vegan, and they're, of course, not tested on, camp on animals. Um, also, there's like two other brands that I use that are organic and vegan and, of course, cruelty-free. And they're the only types of lipsticks and cosmetics that we use. In our, right. uh, in our goal is to, with Dr. Liu will uh, understand, is to remove toxins from our, in, from our environment the best we can. Right. Yeah. So... How can we avoid some of these, these obesogens in our food? So again, we talk about organic plant-based 
and um, uh, whole food. That's another thing is, you know, we, my, my husband actually worked in a house food store of his parents. So you want to make sure you don't go to the middle. You just go to the, um, the middle has a lot of the uh, processed food mm -hmm. and processed food. The reason they can be processed and on the shelf for, you know, a year or two is they add preservative. So a lot of the obesogens come from the preservative. So if you can just avoid, um, you know, those processed food, it's, it's number one, it saves the environment because we don't have all this packaging, plastics. And also I had a patient started doing our clean burn shape and she said she actually saved money because those are expensive items she can't have. So she, she said, oh my God, I can live so simple and save so much money on very expensive items. So that's, that's something I just want people to know. Try right. to make everything yourself. Yeah. Well, you're, and you're eliminating, if you're going plant-based, you're eliminating the cost of meat, which is very expensive, cheeses, mm -hmm. dairy products. I mean, those are all expensive. Those are the expensive things. And I get people asking me all the time, how can you afford to eat plant-based? And I'm like, how can you afford to eat animals? I mean, my God. Well, I mean, that, that and processed food, I mean, all of the processed food is super expensive. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. ridiculous how much money Nick and I have spent. We no longer, we eat it out maybe once a week um, uh, with our friends. If we do that, maybe every other week, but uh, we, we, my, my motto has always been pay now or pay that pay later. You know, uh, we have, I, we take no medications. We have no deductibles. We have no prescription medication deductibles, zero between him and I. So we can afford to invest now in our health by buying organic. And plus I'm a huge supporter of buying local, supporting my organic farmers market so that I'm lessening my toxic footprint on the environment from transporting, you know, pr produce from, you know, wherever to, to Chico. It's all in how we have to start making this difference for ourselves. When we start healing our body, we're going to heal our right. planet by default. So uh, real quick, uh, ladies, um, Jean, the chemist and Dr. Lou Reluca has asked the question, can we address that? She has a, put a question up on our Facebook page. She wants to know why, no, I'm going to try and pronounce this. So bear with me. Phenooxyphenol. Jill, Jean, do you see that? So she has, can we address phenooxythenol, P-H-E-N-O-X-Y-E-T-H-A-N-O-L. Phenoxyethanol. That's it. What is it and why is it in everything? <laughs> well, how about if we answer that on our next show? Uh, she put, yeah, we're, we, we got to answer that one tonight, Jean. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So uh, my advice to patient, if you read the label and something you can't even spell, that's probably not edible. <laughs> Fair point. No, yeah. I don't know. I don't know this chemical off the top of my head, but ethanols, it's an alcohol base. I mean, just basic chemistry. Um, I'm not sure where uh, you're finding this chemical, but, you know, I can certainly research it for the next time. Yeah. So she put a picture of it on our Starch Queens page. So Reluca, bear with us. We will find it and we will put the answer in the comments of this feed. Uh, we'll even try and talk about it next week, but we'll definitely try and answer it and research it and put it in the comment feed so that you have your answer because that's what we want to do. All right. It's getting late. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Lou. We, we, as a matter of fact, one of the comments uh, from Lonnie she said, this has been a fantastic webinar. I hope the good doctor comes back and chats again. Great info. So thank you so much. And that, I think that summarizes what, what our thoughts are too. Because right. the environmental toxins, I could talk about this for hours. And, and it's interesting what you're doing and the amount of information that you're collecting. You're doing lots of these trials. So it, can't wait to see the data that's coming out of these. Thank you so much, ladies. I'm going to send lots of people to get your support. Excellent. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Liu. Thank ladies, you. Have a it's been a great evening. It's been a great evening. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, John Good night. Boy. We didn't Good night. We're going to go for a bike ride. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There you Good go. Night. Thank you, Dr. Liu. Thank you, Dr. Liu. You're welcome. Bye, Dean and Nancy. Bye-bye.